I'm not being in it. Recording. Oh, it's a little cold out here where I am. Uh, it's about uh, 6.50 going on 7 here. And uh, we're just now starting our trip. We're right outside Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, we didn't realize how cold it was going to start being, but I think it's just now sinking in that we might have a really, really cold trip. Kind of figured that, but it's now sinking in for me. Uh, essentially what we're trying to do is go out there into the world and see if we can go far distances uh, with absolutely no clue what we're doing or any idea of where we're sleeping, eating, or anything like that with very little money. And just to kind of prove that it doesn't take a lot to travel very, very far. Hopefully we'll meet a lot of people along the way, help us out, help them out so they can help us out. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to prove that we can truly collaborate and go far distances. Anyway. Mark, you got anything to say? Sure. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. I'm here with my best buddy, Julian Bessonard. And we are on, we're about to be on our way to Atlanta, Georgia, where coincidentally my brother happens to live. So we're gonna go see him, talk to him for a little bit. He works as a truck driver, so he knows plenty about traveling, being on the road, and we'll see you then. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I think everything is just, we use the tools that we have the wrong way. We have, we have cell phones, we have cameras, we have computers, we have wonderful apps and wonderful resources to do all kinds of things in this world. There's things like couch surfing, Craigslist and all that and people just don't seem to use it just for the ease of going to a hotel and just simply buying a hotel room or uh, that kind of thing or, or just uh, buying food them, for themselves instead of like gathering a couple of people and all pitching in and having a meal together. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. We've lost that sense of touch because we use that the tools and technology we have in a wrong way. It's, with, with this technology, we could use it to bring us together, but unless, instead we just kind of end up being apart. Or, that's at least what I've noticed, what I felt, what I've noticed. And this is kind of why I want to go on this trip, is just to see if we've lost that completely and see if this is still possible for us to go out here and really do things on, on the brim, on last minute, you know what I mean, with other people. Do you know what I mean, kind of? Yes, you want to see if um, there can still be trust between strangers. Heck yeah. I, I, want, I want trust to be rebuilt between strangers. All I hear about now, whenever I go on any kind of trip is, watch out, you'll get mugged, watch out, don't talk to strangers, that kind of thing, you know what I mean? And I think the more we do that, the more we'll be scared of talking to each other, and that's all humans have ever done is do things together. That's how we've gotten to where we are now. No one's truly invented something by themselves, you know what I mean? And I feel it's very dangerous for the world for us to be fearful of the people that are around us. Even if we don't know who they are, we should be curious and try to find out who they are and the different personalities you can find in different towns and different cities and different states and different countries, you know what I mean? We all, we're all different and you should kind of seek out to, to discover diversity and to become a more diverse person. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Well, we're on our way to Atlanta right now. I'm kind of excited. Uh, our first night is with uh, your brother, but it's it's good to use the resources that are around you. you, know, you thought of you thought of your brother. You thought of uh, the city of Atlanta, and you kind of pinpointed your brother. And it's good to have different ideas like that and seek out and reach out to the people that you know around you as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What are, we, what are you looking forward to in Atlanta specifically? Do you, do you have anything you want to see? Um, the Coca-Cola factory would be pretty cool. I'm not sure what other sites there could be in Atlanta. But I actually, could... when I was when I was about 14 years old, I went to Atlanta with a um, with a, a group called Hands of Change, and uh, we went to the Coca-Cola factory, and that's what got me hooked on Coke. Like, well, not Coca-Cola. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And ever since then, like ever since recently, where I've been certain, like I've been kind of trying to quit drinking soda. I used to drink a, a Coke a day, like it was just because of the, that Coca-Cola factory. So little fun story there. It's it's 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want to go there. It will really get you hooked on Coke. Or Coca-Cola, shall I say. <laughs> okay. Glad Georgia's on your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Georgia. All right. <laughs> Our first achievement, yo. Woohoo! Woo! Anyway, um, the other night, me and Julian were sitting. We were sitting in his basement, and we were talking about the film and how we were going to fund it. And then we, then somehow we started talking about the beer festival, and I had this thought. It's like. I asked Julian, I'm like, dude, how are all these people going to get home? They're all drunk. There's no taxis. And then it just like, it clicked. And we went out, we made a sign. We, and it said, we'll take you, we'll take you and your car home for a tip. And we made over $140 that night taking people home. Alright, first meal of the, the trip here. Mark, can you explain what we got here? Yeah. You're like one of those vloggers that doesn't know what to record, so they just record themselves eating. Yeah. I kind of like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you see, ladies and gentlemen, we have this sparkling apple peach cider. Looks alcoholic, really not. And a fruit snack with some cheese. So I got some protein, some fruit, some drink. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we're set. We're pretty we're set. much set. We're set. We're set. Mark's brother here, uh, been, <laughs> we drove to his house, but his, uh, you want to explain the story? Yeah, we went, we went to Georgia, and we, we followed the address that he gave us all the way to this house, and he lives in this gated community, we found out, and then we tried to call him. 20 times! <laughs> And he didn't answer, and eventually I was just like, you know what, I'm going to send him a message, I'm going to tell him I love him. I tried to call him, I tried to visit him, but we just, we had to get going. There's, there's nothing else that was going to keep us in Georgia. So. Yeah, so we decided to make the decision to go ahead and uh, start driving towards Miami, and I think uh, that was a pretty good decision, at least I think because uh, now we're closer and we'll be able to enjoy Miami better tomorrow. More time in the city before night falls. And the drive tonight was pretty nice. I, I enjoyed it a lot, but it's getting time to go to bed. Yeah, it's yeah. right about that time. Right about that time, it's about we're, 12.30. Before. We're here at this rest area in uh, <laughs> yeah. Dooley County. Dooley County. And we'll keep y'all updated. And we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good morning, Julian. How are you feeling? I'm all right. <laughs> we had a pretty good, pretty weird night of sleep. Slept in the car. It was good. I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, my, my legs kind of hurt, but yeah, I woke up with a with a dead leg and. A <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, woke up, uh, started on the way to Miami a little early here. Um, pretty nice. Yep. Still, got, still got some road to go. It's Eight o'clock in the morning. Eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, just just went by an accident. It's a little bit unfortunate, but looks like everyone's all right. Yeah. Recording. So my beautiful, wonderful girlfriend back at home works at a Bilo, and we just figured out that, well, I mean, she gave us one of those key cards to get fuel perks at Shell stations, and we just figured out that we saved $1.88 per gallon on gas. So we filled up, and we got a gas tank filled up for about $3. <laughs> 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 Mark's telling me this is something dumb to talk about. <laughs> I'm saying no. That's getting around, bitch. <laughs> Anything to say, Mark? Yeah. 